we'll have you know some great discussions but we won't actually build the confidence and the strength to do what we need to do and so i want to start where we left off last week in revelation chapter 20 and if you you should have a bible whichever scripture you 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 subscribe to because we are a teaching church and we inherently know that the bible and the quran is it's not really not the problem however the translation and the interpretation from the perspective of the greco-romans from the perspective of the pale arab from the perspective of the armenian jew from the perspective of the Ari hindu from the perspective of all others outside of the nubian melanite family outside of this true African family of three groups of 12 royal tribes, Ishmael, Israel, and Midiani. The fact that we as a people have not been consulted on our scriptures, because they teach us that we were savages and that we didn't have any scriptures and that we didn't have any religion and Europe had to come in and save us or the pale Arab had to come in and save us or the Armenian Jew had to come in and save us or the Aryan Hindu had to come in and save us and everybody has to come in and save us, but we the only people on the planet not saved. Think about that. Y'all still with me? Yes. Let's go. I wanna start at Revelation chapter 20. I wanna get a, a, a reader, we can get Someone to start at Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. Because we want to see something here. Because we've been talking about hell. We know that hell and heaven are talked about it in week one. They're really conditions. They do exist, but they really exist as conditions. They exist as a reality based on the condition that we as a people are in. And does anybody remember when we looked at the word hell in the New Testament, there's a word that we found. And even, you know, I think. Paul. Paul. Say it. So say it again, brother. Paul. That was the word fire. We talked about this ever. Fire. Ever. Okay. Yeah, the word fire. And that's good too, because we need to know. That this, they talk, they talk about the fires of hell. When we looked up the, the word fire. Brother Johnny, we, we, what word did we find? Poor. Poor. Like you mean like, like people who poor. Like you ain't got no money. Like you struggling. Huh? Poor. Yes, sir. And so people talking about hell, fire, as if they're going to go somewhere and be burning up, which doesn't make too much sense because if, you're going to experience this fire after you have transitioned or some people say, many people say die. Your body isn't going to be there. Right. So, so why are they convincing us that we have to be afraid of some fire when the literal fire that they want us to be convinced is going to burn us up? It won't be able to burn us up because we will not be in this physical body according to the very people who teach us about heaven and hell. Right. These are the things we have to think about and understand because there's someone got us thinking about heaven and hell more than we think about the very earth that we are on and, and, and actually interact with every day. Think about that. Mm -hmm. so we don't try to understand our environment. We don't even try to understand our own body. How do we know we don't try to understand our own bodies? Anyone? Wait, wait. Get down, please. How, how do we know that we don't try to even understand our own bodies, our physical bodies? Where we treat it. That's right. Where you we, we do care things of it. That, that are adverse to our body health. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're sick. We are yeah. sick. And this is what they say the, the, the real and living Messiah, Yahshua Kores had to go and heal people and, and perform these miracles as they were referred to. We, know, we understand it as the pyramid sciences or, or those, those sciences called alchemy, whereby he utilized 
ancients, their attributes and elements. And he was able to assist people with recalibrating their body. That's what healing is, it's about recalibrating. And so we're, we're recalibrating Christianity as it is known today by taking it back to its origins. So we could start at Revelation 20, verse 1. It says, and I saw a what? An angel. An angel. Come down from heaven. Okay, let's, let me talk about heaven. What's this heaven that this angel is coming from? Is this heaven further than the furthest star? Because that's what we've been taught. Heaven is further than the furthest star. And if, and if that's the case, then, you know, Jesus. Funny as that may sound, or as disrespectful or blasphemous as that may sound, depending on who's listening, the universe as we know it today, they say is four to five to six billion years, light years. And we only talking about 2,000 years ago. This angel is, it says, coming down, the word angelos is messenger, atabeno, is coming down from heaven. And, and, and who's speaking here in, in, in the book of Revelation? John. John, or who we originally knew as, as Yahanu, is speaking. And if he could see an angel coming, but, but what else did he see? He saw heaven. Because he didn't just say the angel came or come. This Greek word here, we know that as, as it is presented to us today, because our brothers and sisters in on these matters. And so we'll deal with it from this perspective at this point. And of course, as Abba Sesh goes through uh, the Istanjil, by Istanjil, the book of Revelation from an African perspective, we go into the original languages that the book was written in. But here in the Greek, we see the word katab aino. And it means to go down, to come down, to descend the place from which one has come down from. To come down as from the temple at Jerusalem. From the city of Jerusalem. So it doesn't only mean coming down out of the sky. Per se. It could also mean coming down from the temple. Or coming down from what they're calling Jerusalem, which originally was Jerusalem. And this Jerusalem is what we as true Christians or true Christians know as Amirna. Everybody say Amirna. 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 And this Amirna, which is a real place actually is the original what's called Bethlehem. This Bethlehem or this house, the word Beth is the word house or Beit is the word house and the word Lehem is the word flesh. So they'll, they'll even say bread. So if we look up this word Amarna, right, we're going to see that this is an actual ruin and it's saying that this angel, it came down from this temple and we can see here this is actual picture of Amarna. This is the actual rendition of Amarna. Now, what do they have in, in parenthesis next to the word Amarna? Egypt, Egypt, yes. Egypt, right? So when it is mentioned that Jesus, Yahshua, was sent to Egypt, the word Egypt didn't exist yet. The country didn't exist right. yet. So was he being sent to Egypt that we see today, or was he being sent to a place that they today still call Egypt, known as Amarna? This is the question we have to answer, because this represents our heaven on earth. Because mm -hmm. this particular verse is saying that this angel came down either from a city, but then it also mentions of celestial beings coming down to earth, which takes us to Genesis 6, where the sons and, and, and daughters for the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. And it also takes us to the book of Revelation, where the disagreeables amongst those in the heavens were cast down to earth in Revelation 12. But it says metaphorically, to go, that is, be cast down to the lowest state of wretchedness and shame. So this is another interpretation of this word. Your continents can come down, like in the story of Cain and Abel whereby he didn't get his way, his continents fell, and he was possessed. And so these words are from the European perspective. This angel that originally has a relationship with the celestial heaven, he came from heaven. You don't understand why when we talk about celestial beings, people get weird and spooky when the person that they say they believe in said that 
he is from above and, and, and you are from beneath and where the above is where I knew this in the book of John chapter eight. We're going to go to these verses. I just want to stay on track. But this angel has come down, they say, from heaven. So heaven can be a celestial realm. Heaven can also be a place on earth where the conditions of the celestial realm are created on earth so that we can thrive on earth as we do in what is called the heavens. Amun? Amun, yes. The word heaven, though, is the word oranos. Oranos. And this word oranos is also the word Orion, as in the Orion star constellation. And so this explains why John would have been able to see heaven the same way where to look in the skies. And if you do know how to look, where to look, you will see this constellation called what they refer to in the, in, in the Greco Roman uh, zodiac as, as Orion and Orion's belt. But we, as true Christians, we, as Animal doctrine of Asaru and Aset, the Nazarites, we understood that this constellation represented the body of Asaru and it rests on the earth today, whereby we came out of this constellation to this earth and along the way we lost our way. And so, yes, this may sound far fetched to some people who may be hearing it for the first time. However, the question that we always ask is why is it being mentioned in your Bible if it's not related to? what you should be learning. Why is it in here? I'm, I'm only reading from the King James Version of the Bible. I didn't just go randomly look up the Orion constellation. It's in Revelation 20. So he's seeing this constellation. He's seeing this angel. And it says that this angel has the key, the cleese. So why would this angel have a key? What is this key? You need to be clear about what we're seeing and why we're seeing it. This word, cleese or kleis, in the Greek, it says a key. It says, since the keeper of the keys has the power to, metaphorically, in the New Testament, to denote power and authority of various kinds. So there's a key that allows those who have access to it to open and shut something. I'm going to get to what that thing is in a second. But this key, they say, is also mentioned in, 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 in Revelation 3 and 7. And I want to go there because I want to pull up what, what, we, what we do have access to on, on the PDF since we don't have uh, 20th scroll of the Istanbul in the PDF. We can look at scroll number three. And then looking at scroll number three, we'll have an idea of what this key is, not because Kahun Uncle is saying it, but because. Our scriptures are saying, and so scroll number three. If, if you have your Istanbul, we're on page, we're on page one hundred and ten. And let's see if we have access. All right, so we're around uh, verse uh, one. Verse 50, rather. And this is important because if we don't go into the languages, then we, we miss completely what the message originally was saying to us. Are y'all still with me? Yes. Yes, go. All right. And so before we dive into the Istanbul, let's just make sure we know what it says. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. It says, unto the angel of the church, the angel of the church of, uh, of, in Philadelphia, right? These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. So this is what is saying in what is called the book of Revelation today. And as we go to verse 57, We're going to look at it with African eyes. Ismail Rab al Khaliko will bring begin all things by way of the name of the sustainer, boundless universes, who is and Nairi, the great I am, who is the creator, the generous one. So it says here, as we learn more about what this key is in verse 57, and I'm just making sure that it does align, 
okay? I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. But thou hast a little strength, and has kept the word, and denied me. I want, I want the one that says, the, the, the way that the scriptures are written, so actually we are in verse 50, next. The way the scriptures are written in the King James Version today was not how it was written originally. And so we're just making sure that we're lining up with the right verse. It says, with every fleeting moment, verse 56 of scroll three, change. The one constant within existence is occurring. So be aware that you too are five disciples. Tata Yahanu, that's who we mentioned earlier. The possessor of the double Asarian transient spirit. So this double Asarian transient spirit, or what is called the Hanu, or what is called the double portion of the spirit, is moving in this day and time. And people, because they're waiting for manifestation of the Greco-Roman Hellenistic teachings, we're missing this spirit. We're not paying attention. We're not being aware of what's taking place right in front of us. It says, for was for a sixth time instructed by Melchizedek Mikhail, the angel Michael, as they would say. A living Latter-day incarnation of Tehuti Mikhail is a physical being. These are not fat little white babies with wings. These are uh, African guardian angelic hosts. To so right. have a message unto the angelic, guard, angelic guardian, which was assigned over the original Nubian Melanonite families, which were taken captive, kidnapped, and eventually sold into slavery by the branch of the pale Arab Emirates that did rule as Indo-Aryans out of the symbolic land of Philadelphia. And as such, those who seek true faith shall be allowed to see that the one on the throne who as a descendant of the original sacrificial shepherd Asaru, so we talked about this heaven and the fact that the word heaven, they say is Oranos, but in the African theology, this Oranos or Orion is known as Sahu, which is another word of, way of saying the soul of Asaru, this original sacrificial shepherd, those who are descending out of this original sacrificial shepherd sit now on the throne or sit in authority amongst those that they have been assigned to. Revelation isn't just talking about Jesus coming to save everybody. It doesn't say that. It says that there are seven churches, and these seven churches have angels assigned to the various churches. These angels, so you got to be looking for these angels. They are there. Yes. Because if you ain't yeah. looking for these angels and all you're doing is looking for Jesus, you're going to miss this opportunity. You're going to miss this moment. As such, those who seek true faith shall be allowed to see the one on the throne who is a descendant of the original sacrificial shepherd of sorrow. So if you ain't seeking true faith, you ain't going to see it. Shall be allowed to be associated with truthful realities as a saru. And all those of his line were crowned with ma'at, that is ma'at, universal order and the balancement of these. This is the reality of what the universe is built on the law. These feathers of truth and justice on their heads, bearing the words of the holy, the true one in the, in, in the various manifestations, in the various tribes. This is a still wearing these feathers from the darkest of truth to the lightest mm -hmm. of truth. Let Gabriel speak, mm -hmm. wherein he shall say, Thus says the Messiah or the Messiah Yeshua Christ, he that is of the seed of Seti Dawood, wherein he does speak forth by way of Melchizedek Mikael, a living Latter-day incarnation of Mikael, Seti Dawood. Seti Dawood, they say Amos chapter 9, verse 11, because we know it today, they named things the way that they wanted to name those things. They didn't pay attention to the original Rami matter. It is what it is. But we have a responsibility now to go back and look and say a scripture, and we got to put it back in order. Amos 9 11 says, What in that day, what I will wait for the tabernacle. tabernacle of David that is fallen. So, we, 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 we're admitting now that the original tabernacle fell. Are we seeing this? Yes, and if the yes. original tabernacle fell, can we now say that we were in a state of hell? That's a real question. <laughs> yeah. Because how is the tabernacle falling? You still ain't you you, you ain't in hell. <laughs> and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his what? Ruins. Now, didn't we just look at some ruins? Mm -hmm. what, was the name, what was the name of those ruins? Amirna. Amirna. And I will build it. As in the days of old, is this not what we're talking about right now? Yeah, we're talking about building it right now. Building, building it right now. Scripture is alive. Wow. The Bible ain't the problem. Wow. 
problem is we don't see it with African eyes. It goes on. So this Sethi Dawood, wherein he does speak forth by way of Melchizedek Mikhail, a living Latter-day incarnation of Tahuti Mikhail, it says, we are the holy and true ones, whereby we are given the master's key. What's the name of the master's key, please? The Ankh. Ankh. So this angel has a key, and this key is the Ankh. Hmm. So we want to see what the Ankh looks like for those people who might say, what's an Ankh? I never heard about an Ankh. What is that? Or they may woman Nachi. That's, they give you all of these crazy interpretations of something that existed way before any of the craziness. But these are different examples of how they actually hijacked it. Why it says one is older than the next. They say one is 3000 BCE. They say before the common era. And they say one is common era. They say this is the Egyptian. Oh, we know the word Egypt is, is Greek as well. But it's the African mm -hmm. cross, this ninth, original ninth hour cross, based on the feminine principles of nature, spirituality, and peace. Because we had matriarchal and patriarchal societies, and this is why this symbol represents not only the matriarchal society, but also the patriarchal. The womb at the top, ballot at the bottom, coming together to produce life. Whereas we see the cross has been represented by the Greco-Roman churches is based on the masculine principles. They say of democracy, politics, and war. And you see a phallic at the bottom. And then you see a little phallic at the top. And then you start doing research on these churches that are molesting children. And then you understand why they're using this symbol. Mm -hmm. but let's continue. So this key is the unk. The unk also represents the four schools. So we, as we talk about heaven and hell, we have to learn it from the perspective of the four schools. This unk or this key represents Anu, Nut, Chemenu, and Hetkata, four cities, earth, wind, water, and fire societies. And that's why it says the key, this master's key, in its many sacred forms, to pass unto those amongst humanity that are worthy to hold it. You got to be, be made worthy. You, you got to put in your time. Study. You got to live what you teach. You got to live what you say you are to be worthy in order to hold this master's key. What does a master key do? Open a master lock. Any lock. <laughs> All locks. All locks. That's all, right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. A master. Every key, lock. <laughs> every lock. So any doctrine you put in the front of a true Christian, it can be opened up once you have the master's key. Wow. Right. That's right. And so when this angel is coming with this key, it is it is the teachings that allow for us to understand. Well, what, 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 what is this bottomless pit we about to read about? Because Yahshua didn't talk about a bottomless pit when they, when we read in Matthew 5, 22, I think it was last week, and they talk about the, the burning fires of hell. The word for hell wasn't the word abyss. It was the word Jehenna. And, and Jehenna was an actual valley south of Jerusalem where they would throw the dead bodies and they would burn it. And they would sacrifice children to a God yeah. called Molech. It was yeah. right here on earth. This hell that Yahshua was talking about was right on earth. But this is not talking about that. It's not using the word Jehenna in the Greek as we're going to see in a bit. So this master's key in its many sacred forms has to be passed on to those amongst humanity that are worthy to hold it in their hands, the sign of the authority and power they shall possess to open the seven great seals of all the greater and lesser mysteries of the celestial heavens and the terrestrial earth. If you want to know the names of those seals, you can just go right to the fifth scroll of this same Istanbul. And if somebody asks tonight, we can do it. But it's opening up the understanding of what the original teachings were all about. Our 
teachings have to reflect the peace and the harmony and the authority that we say it does. You can't look, you can't hold.